There we go. Let me start over. Welcome to the Fierce Floyd Show. This live edition. As always, I am your host, Fearless Floyd. Today, we're going to talk about Scott versus DeSantis at all. And this case is coming from this uh, fine woman right here, Christine Scott. So all you folks out there across America and even internationally who are all, you know, rah, 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 Brunson brothers, Brunson brothers, Brunson brothers. Forget the Brunson brothers. This woman right there, that's the one. Her case, we're going to go over that, okay? Okay. I'm not going to go over the complete 982-page petition she filed or the 100-plus writ of mandamus that she just filed on the 6th, okay? For any of you who actually go and read some of these documents that uh, are being bandied about by the Brunson brothers and Miss Scott here, it's not even night and day. It's like um, it's like giving a one-year-old child a crayon and a white floor versus giving a 40-year veteran with legal acumen doing the same thing, riding a legal vehicle. So that's the comparison between the Brunson brothers and Scott's. The Brunson brothers are the one-year-old on the ground drawing a crayon. Christine Scott, when you see the when you see what she's done, this is the real deal. This is the one everybody should be pay, paying attention to. This is the one that everybody should be pontificating about, sharing, but they're not. So leave it to Fearless Floyd to bring it to you. As always, I am the one who goes out and finds the stuff that nobody else is talking about. Put it up here. For the most part, y'all don't even pay attention to it. Unless I'm being deliberately shadow banned and it's not reflected in the viewership and subscribers. I don't know. All I can do is continue to do the videos, continue to present the facts. Not my facts. Their facts. So... Right here, as you see, 982 pages, the 11th Circuit writ to Clarence Thomas. Now, let me preface this and explain this. Christine Scott, no, hang on, I'm not even sharing. All right. Here you go. As you see right here, 982 pages, 11th Circuit writ to Clarence Thomas. All right. Application to Associate Justice Thomas seeking a review of petition for writ of certiorari under Supreme Court Rule 11 and 22, Federal Rules of Appellate Procedure, Rule 2, and the 11th Circuit Local Rule 2-1. This emanates, this case emanates out of a state court in Florida. The Florida Leon Circuit Court the case is still open, but appears to be closed, which blocks it from moving forward or being heard. So this is where you see the corruption in the courts. Um, I had the honor today to um, have a conversation with the um, beautiful woman who ran against Sheila Jackson Lee for the 18th Congressional District here in Texas for U.S. Congress uh, in 2022. Uh, she got about 40,000 plus votes. Sheila Jackson Lee got over 100,000. Uh, that was a quite interesting conversation. And the reason I bring that up is because she dealt with that. So we all know that the courts are corrupt. It's all business. So what they've done is they uh, closed the door on her, what they call meaningful 
access to courts, her right to access to courts. They've shut the courthouse door. She's supposed to be open 24 seven. That's why when this happened, she went to a superior court. She's not getting any relief in Florida on the state level. So she moved to the federal level. She went directly to the 11th circuit. Okay. And she went by writ of certiorari. It's all her info. Okay. And this is a mercy application regarding election fraud affecting national security brought under United States Supreme Court Rule 1122 and their footnotes, of course, and we already went through this. To the Honorable Clarence Thomas, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States and Circuit Justice for the United States Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit. Each justice has its own little circuit that they're over. So if, like, I'm here in Houston, Texas, Harris County, state of Texas, within the region of Texas, Mississippi, and Louisiana, which is the U.S. U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. Um, I don't know who's over it now. It used to be um, Alito. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, Scalia. <laughs> Antonin Scalia used to be over the Fifth Circuit. Uh, so whenever you go to the Fifth Circuit, you do an appeal and you want to take it to the Supreme Court, you can do it on an individual justice level which is the justice over your circuit, or you can ask for the entire Supreme Court hearing. So what she's done, she's taken this to Clarence Thomas. Thank God is probably the most conservative of all the conservative justices on the United States Supreme Court. So this is what she's done. She's making a national security issue. Okay, right there. So that puts it on front street immediately because it's a national security issue which affects not only all the people in the country but the country itself the integrity of the country so this goes on and on but uh, to give you a synopsis this case is based on an election plagued by over 3b statute or it should be 38 yeah when this got scanned it turned it into a, a, a b instead of an a uh, over 38 statutory violations of fraud by state and county officials, should be officials, where the election machines were either not certified, certifiable, or both, where the state's official records claim no registered voter from any party voted, and where candidates certified their own races. This misconduct, fraud, and corruption took place in all of Florida's 67 counties, after having moved that the judge disqualify himself due to a repeated and blatant refusal to follow governing statute, Florida Statute 102.168, contest of election, which supersedes any court rules of procedure and which was put into place to ensure election cases could move swiftly through the court system on May 17th, 2023, Scott added, necessarily added him. State of Florida and our country is currently under attack by both foreign and domestic entities. Biden family. Where'd that come from? Hmm. Among other Republicans and Democrats, allegedly, thank you, which seek to destroy her on many levels, not only you, Christine, but the entire country and all its inhabitants, regardless of whether you're a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, or you're an illegal immigrant, or you're here on a green card visa. Doesn't matter. They're after you including but not limited through abuse of election process, which has been completely overtaken in Florida, amounting to no less than a coup by traders from within working with foreign enemies, showing that the case is of such imperative public importance as to justify deviation from normal appellate practice and to require immediate determination in this court. See section or see title 28 USC section 2101E. And Rule 11, search for to the United States Court of Appeals before judgment. To ensure this court can seamlessly move forward in its review of this case, which addresses matters of state ultimately affecting national security, and because the United States Supreme Court is the highest appellate court in the land and capable of hearing the matter without pressure from politicians or other outside influences, Scott requests this court implement Federal Rules of Appellate Procedure 2, FRAP. So when you hear me say FRAP, 
That's what I'm discussing, Federal Rules of Appellate Procedure. Suspension of rules, which states, quote, on its own or a party's motion, a court of appeals may, to expedite its decision or for other good cause, suspend any provision of these rules in a particular case and order proceedings as it directs and as is described in the 11th Circuit Rule 2-1 court action, which states that in lieu of the procedures described in the 11th Circuit Rules and internal operating procedures, the court may take such other or different action as it deems appropriate to avoid a successful coup and overthrow both the Florida and national government. It is imperative that Justice Thomas review this case, which has been caged in and blocked from being near here, being heard or moving to a higher court by the Leon County Circuit Court, as well as clerks and chief justice of the first district court of Florida. This case is open in Leon County Circuit Court. The chief judge went so far as to assign a new judge, but the clerks have refused to show that the case is open on the docket, and everyone in the judiciary appears to be pretending the case is closed. It looks like the strategy is to stall until after the 2024 election cycle and then to call the case moot or abandon because you failed to prosecute the case, dismissed for failure to prosecute. Uh, they will do that, and they will do that without you even knowing about it. You know, I have reversed cases because they've done that, absolutely, in the books. Scott has a right to a fair trial. She has a right to have evidence heard in this case. Her evidence is, actually, you have a right to meaningful access to the courts. You have a right to be free from cruel and unusual punishment, and that's basically what they're doing. They're violating the, definitely the Eighth Amendment, definitely the Fourth and the Fourteenth, uh, your sixth, uh, your first, <laughs> I can go on and on. Uh, she has the right to have evidence heard in the case. Her evidence is solid. And if heard, she will win the case. And the people of Florida will rightfully be able to have a new election. Each Floridian has the right to have their vote counted. Yet none were. All right. So this is our ex explanation why she submitted it, which I've already gone over. All right, but I wanted to just give you all a brief synopsis of what this case is about, where it emanates from, why it emanates. I can get into the minutiae of the case, but she pretty much covered most of it. Okay. And I don't want this to be a long video. I want to do this real short and sweet and get it over with and out of the way. And uh, I've, as you guys know, I have a subscription to Pacer. So. I'm able to pull all this information up on the federal level. Share. All right, this was filed November 6th with her, um, her writ of mandamus, which I'll get to next. But as you see, there's the, there's the file mark. And actually, it was filed the day before, but they wanted her to come back and redo it. So yeah, that's not even how that should look, but it is what it is. <clears throat> uh, U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit Certificate of Interested Persons and Corporate Disclosure Statement. Henry Christine Scott versus Ronald DeSantis et al. The appellate number. And just going through this. Just to show you that it has been filed. Here's the notice of uh, interested parties that she amended to it. And she's going after everybody. And, uh, I've reached out to her for an interview. And of course, I didn't hear back from her. And, you know, rightfully so, I don't blame her. I would imagine she's not even in Florida. <laughs> I would imagine she's somewhere else hunkered down, uh, terrified. Terrified of her government. Terrified of retaliation. Absolutely. I mean, just look at look who she's going after. Billionaires. 
multi-billion dollar corporations. That's who she's going after. The list is long, vast, and deep. Okay. Now, did I get a chance to go through the whole 192, eight, uh, 982 pages? Uh, I did my best to put a dent in it. To the writ of mandamus. Okay. That right there, that's your header. And that tells you that this has been filed. So whenever you see that blue header, and there's a footer on there. Well, usually sometimes there's a footer. But anyway, that shows you it's a genuine article. Case number, Henry Christine Scott, petitioner derived from an emergency application addressed to the Honorable Supreme Court Associate Justice Thomas, who presides over the 11th Circuit of the United States Court of Appeals and brought forth under the Supreme Court of the United States Rules 11 and 22, the United States Court of Appeals Federal Rules of Appellate Procedure Rule 2, and the United States Court of Appeals 11th Circuit Rules of Appellate Procedure, which is a local rule, Rule 2.2-1, relating to election interference meant to undermine the national and economic security of the United States by way of an ongoing coup by foreign and domestic enemies of the state, which is of imperative public import. Petition for Rita Mandamus, and I've filed dozens of these things. Okay, what are, what's the definition of a Rita Mandamus, Floyd? Definition of a writ of mandamus is because a lower court's not doing something, not functioning as it should, lawfully and legally. You petition a higher court to direct the lower court to do something, whatever it is they're not doing, whether it's a hearing, a motion, a proceeding, um, docketing the case, getting a record from a clerk or a reporter's record or from an, another attorney, et cetera, et cetera. When the court that you're currently in is stagnated or deliberately not functioning according to procedure, lawful procedure, then you would petition to a higher court for relief. This is what she has done. She has gone from the Florida Circuit Court up to the 11th Circuit and then petitioned via the 11th Circuit to Justice Thomas in the United States Supreme Court for just a justice hearing, which is Clarence Thomas. Okay. Parties to the proceeding, petitioner in this court, plaintiff in the Circuit Court, appellate and state district courts of appeals is pro se litigant Christine Scott. Respondents to this court, or respondents in this court, are the United States of America, the state of Florida, the state of Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, blah, 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 all the way to Wyoming. Okay, <laughs> I just got to the chase. It looks like it's all 50 states. Uh, I did not see any territories in here, but I'm sure it affects the territories as well. I would have included the territories. Yes, absolutely. Because they like to be left alone. So they'll, they'll probably support you. Certificate of Interested Parties and Corporate Disclosure Interested Parties. And this list is incredibly long. Okay. Center for Tech and Civil Life, Apple, uh, YouTube, subsidiary of Alphabet, Twitter, Amazon, Amazon, uh, Center for Tech and Civil Life again, uh, again, Alphabet, uh, Google, Apple, Twitter, Twitter, Amazon, Staple Street Capital, Central Intelligence Agency Corporation, uh, the Zuckerbergs, China Contractors, Dominion Voting Systems Corporation, 
Florida government employee, election software and systems, Facebook. Federal Bureau of Investigations, Florida Governor Election, all Chinese assets in Florida, all Chinese assets in the United States, BlackRock, Microsoft, Canopy Consulting, Mando County Supervisor, Osceola County Supervisor, Center for Disease Corporation, that's the Center for um, Diseases. Um, Ala, Alachua, Alakua, County Supervisor of Elections. Hunter Biden, Joseph Biden. BlackRock again. Attorney for Ted Deutsch, Palm Beach County, uh, Broward County Sheriff. Brown County Clerk, 4th District Court of Appeals Clerk, 4th District Court of Appeals Clerk. Oh, yeah, she's going after everybody. Uh, UBS Securities. And I'm only in the C's. 26 letters, characters in the alphabet. So, Chinese Communist Party. Clear ballot ink, Clewiston Police Department. Uh, speed this up. First District Court of Appeals Clerk, DARPA. Now you know, you understand why I told you guys that she's probably not in Florida and she's hunkered down in fear of her life. Absolutely. This 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 kind of case they don't like they don't want to see too 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 many people involved, but the only way that you guys are going to know about this and who all is involved in this case is people like me that present these videos for you. Okay, I'm covering it. I'm covering all this stuff. It is my belief the Brunson brothers are going nowhere. That's just I, I believe the Brunson brothers. My own opinion is the Brunson brothers are a psyop. Absolutely. They have taken over the whole MAGA thing and blown up for nothing. If you go read their writs of certiorari to the United States Supreme Court, it looks like a child wrote it. I'm sorry. I reached out to them. I spoke to one of the Brunson brothers personally, offered my legal acumen and assistance, as well as Brian Robertson, pastor of the way, who act, has access to West Law online, and we both volunteered to assist them. Proofreading, editing, or adding to their petition prior to filing. And guess what? We never heard back from them. And I've repeatedly tried to reach out to them. Nothing. They don't want any help. Why? You tell me. Why wouldn't you even listen or even contemplate somebody who's been to the United States Supreme Court well over a dozen times and every court in between? And has proof of it. And understands the court system, how it works. Yeah. Well, here's a woman who understands how it works. And, it's, and I'm impressed, absolutely, with what she has accomplished. I don't know if she's doing this herself. If she has a team behind her. But God bless her. God speed, Christine Scott. Absolutely. May more power be with you. All of us should be supporting this woman. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Bill Gates, Melinda Gates. You know, they're allegedly they're dead, right? Uh, GoFundMe, Amazon, or UBS Securities. I didn't go this far when I was opening it up. Mitch McConnell, Charles Schumer. Uh, wow. 
Life Inc., whatever that is, Government of China, Mala Harris, Hendry County Clerk, Hendry County Deputy Clerks, Hendry County Sheriff's Office. GP Jing. Wow. Knight Foundation, whatever that is. The Rockefeller Brothers Fund, PayPal. Ooh, you know, it's the PayPal Mafia. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised we haven't seen the Clintons on here. YouTube, Rock the Vote, Democracy Fund. Board of Attorneys. Wow. All these people have to be served as too. Meta Platforms, Inc., Microsoft Corporation. Walmart, U.S. House of Representative Jared Moskowitz, Elon Musk. So he's got a copy. That should be interesting to get his view on uh, this. Ah, Barack Obama, Bruh. as Ted Nugent would say. Bruh. <laughs> Barack and Michael. Obama, yeah, that's what Trump needs to do is come out and tell uh, everybody that Michelle is Michael and put it out there on Front Street and see what happens. That way, that would prevent her from being able to run in 2024 because everybody would know that they've been lied to for decades by the Obamas, by Michelle, by the Democratic National Party, and that the only one that told us the truth was Joan Rivers. Nancy Pelosi, oh, yeah, yeah, Bobby Powell, Florida Senator, Runbeck Election Services, Inc. I'm just going through here. I'm not even really looking at names. Uh, I'm looking at the businesses, Office of the Attorney General, United States of America. Keep going after America. VR Systems, whatever that is. There's Walmart. We, the people of the state of Florida. We, the people of the United States. Miami Dade. Wix.com. Woman Donors Network. Christopher Ray. Oh, 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 I heard that name before. Christine Scott is not a corporation. She does not own 10% or more of shares in any organization or corporation. She has nothing to disclose. There you go. There's your disclosure statement. Statement of related proceedings. And this is the one in Leon County, Leon County Circuit Court, Leon County Circuit Court, table of contents. Okay. Now, I put together something similar to this, except mine have been more extensive. So as you see, she you have to put together this table of contents. And it looks to me like the majority of this is she's doing nothing but uh, just repeating law. It doesn't look like there's any argument, I don't think. Statement of the case. Oh, okay, there we go. So let's see if she has this title right. Okay, table of authorities. Table of contents. I'll put the table of contents first. That's just me. Uh, index of authorities. Let me see. She's got this lined up right. So she just put what? This is all court cases. Yep. 
constitutional provision. So she didn't use, there's not one court of U.S. Court of Appeals case cited. Doesn't look like. Florida court case law, Florida statutes, rules, other authorities, statement of the case. Excellent job. Excellent. Except I would have put some spaces over here, but sometimes when you ship this, it's, it, yeah, getting it all lined up sometimes is harder than you actually putting it together. Sometimes people just leave it and move on faster. Uh, so uh, let's just go through these real quick. Statement of the case, jurisdiction standing, relevant constitutional statutory provisions involved, relief sought, issues presented, uh, which are vulnerable election, uh, electronic election equipment, misconduct, fraud, corruption by Florida state election officials and employees, misconduct, fraud, and corruption by Florida county election officials and employees, misconduct, fraud, and corruption by Florida legislature. The facts necessary to understand the issues presented by the petitioner. Uh, quite lengthy. Uh, we'll go to A. Florida's Division of Elections closed book records, official results from precinct level results state that no registered Republicans, Democrats, or others voted during the 2020 or 22 election cycles. ES and S, DS200 was used in 49 Florida counties while not federally certified during the 22, 2020 and 22, 2022 election cycles. Well, that would probably include the 2023 if y'all had one. Foreign owned Dominion is manufactured in China which is an enemy of the state within the 2005 war doctrine against the United States with software developed in Serbia. D, fraudulent certification of multi-county state and federal races by the Election Canvassing Commission due to the benefit of certifying themselves as the winner of their respective race during the 2022 election cycle. E, clear ballot. Uncertified and uncertifiable in Florida was fraudulently used in 26 Florida counties during the 2022 election cycle. F, uncounted precinct level votes in Florida counties in violation of Florida statute 98.09812A. G, Doe and Doe's refusal to fulfill public records requests aiding and concealing misconduct, fraud, corruption, and treason by aiding in blocking the public's ability to verify the, the chain of custody and the accuracy of the 2020 and 2022 election results. H, Florida legislature conspired to hide election data by creating statute that exempts election data results from public access based on trade secrets in violation of constitutional right to access to public records and to know the process by which their elections are being conducted. Reasons for granting the writ. Petitioner's right to issue the writ is clear. Writ of mandamus is warranted given the urgent circumstances of the case. No other adequate means to obtain relief exists. Conclusion. What a conclusion. Uh, so I'm going to assume that that's going to be her prayer. So let's go to 98 and see her prayer, because this is how we read legal vehicles. We read the title. All right. What is it? It's a petition for writ of mandamus. Okay. What do you want? Okay. I know what you sent me. Now, what are you asking for? So let's go see if there's a prayer. And again, these are all the people that it got served to, which, as you can see, is quite extensive. Right? That's redundant. Apparently, it started feeding it back, self back in again. So here we go. Certification. Conclusion. Adequate means remedy. Warranting reasons for granting the writ. So, no prayer. 
you could have put a prayer in here, I would have. Let them know we're still operating under God's purview. It is in, of it is of imperative public importance that this court grant this petition for the survival of our country, which is in the middle of a well orchestrated and strategized coup by enemy forces, foreign and domestic, that have infiltrated all branches of government and intend to turn our free people into enslaved populace, producing for corporations and elites. A few years ago, such a notation was fantastical. Today, it pounds loudly in plain sight in the middle of every day. This mandamus is unequivocally, this mandamus unequivocally shows that the results of the 2020 and 2022 election cycles were conducted on vulnerable electronic equipment, which was manufactured by programmed in substantial part at the hands of or with the involvement of foreign nationals often presiding on enemy soil, which creates reasonable doubt the, the results represented the will of the people. The likelihood that those attempting to take over our country have inst installed selected officials to represent our enemy's needs instead of those of the American people is extremely high, cannot be ignored, and demands the 2020 and 2022 election cycles be set aside and held anew for the safety and security of our fine nation. Ram Ritter Mandamus is warranted given the urgent circumstances of the case. Every Floridian and, more broadly, American in every state of the Union has the right to a fair and accurate election that occurred in an honest and reliable manner, which did not take place during the 2020 nor 2022 election cycles, in large part due to unjustifiably vulnerable and manipulable, manipulatable election equipment that compromised officials, employees, contractors, vendors, and agents allowed into our election process, necessitating the election be set aside and held anew without the use of electronic devices since such have proven to be compromised. Effective weapons of war used against the American people to destroy us. There is no other adequate means to obtain relief. The application and subsequent mandamus is necessary due to the imperative public importance based on the current coup and act of war by foreign and domestic enemies of the state, Scott and every American is currently facing, which has put our entire nation in peril. For these reasons, there is no other adequate means of relief. The urgency of this matter demands that this court address and remedy the issues at hand based on Supreme Court Rule 11, Federal Rules of Procedure Rule 2, and the 11th Circuit Rule 2-1. Neither Scott nor any other American can risk having this matter bogged down in the lower court when immediate action is necessary. And I'll second that motion for the record. So you have my uh, ultimate support as a non-citizen national of the United States of America. Scott attempted to address this in the lower court, but in violation of the presiding statute under which the case was brought forth, Florida Statute 102-168, which forbids a case to be dismissed before heard or both, the 2020 and 2022 cases were dismissed in violation of my constitutional statutory rights. The cases are still open in the lower case since the judgments are void. The state district court clerks have dismissed my cases that were properly filed, blocking them from being heard at an appellate level. The matters addressed in this case are of dire importance and cannot be bogged down for endless years or buried by rogue, bought off, or blackmailed judges or clerks, which is the current scenario Scott is experiencing at the circuit and district levels within Florida. In such, no other adequate means to obtain relief exists. All right. This is a systematic, systematic, folks, corrupt, fraudulent, treasonous actions by these court clerks, these court judges and justices, and all the court personnel that are protecting each other. And what's really sad is most of these just civil employees, low level, have no authority, don't know crap, or being told what to do. And they're actually being told to commit treason. And they don't know that. They think they're just following what their supervisor told them, following policy. But they're actually violating state and federal law. 
absolutely disenfranchising the American people. Everybody has a right to act meaningful access to the courts. It's it's been ruled by the Supreme Court over and over and over and over and over. The courthouse door shall not be shut. But due to the existence of corruption, fraud, it's pervasive. She's bringing it all out. She's laying it out. This is this is beautiful work. Thank you, Christine. That's all I can tell you. Thank you. You're more than welcome to contact me anytime. The Fearless Floyd Show at Yahoo.com. If y'all know Christine, she can call me off the record. Talk to me. Uh, y'all know my phone number. It's easy to find. It's on my website. It's everywhere. Even on my Facebook. Due to uh, the act of war by foreign and domestic enemies of the state. And, and, and hey, look, it's not mince words here. This is a war on the United States of America and the people. By the people. But the people don't even know it. They're being orchestrated to carry out this internal domestic civil war. We, the people, are at war with our own local, city, county, parish, if you're in Louisiana, state, and federal governments. And if you think we're not, you're crazy. I'm just going to tell you that. I go outside same day, same time, every day, walk my dog. I look up in the sky this past week, and there's just chemtrail after chemtrail after chemtrail. Same time, same place. They're spraying in the same place. Absolutely. That's domestic terrorism. That's your government trying to kill you, eradicate you. All right. Which has put our entire nation in peril, therefore necessitating immediate, the immediacy of the relief, and there is no other adequate means of relief. The United States Corporation was dissolved due to bankruptcy, which determines the new election will be for the 19th of the United States in all related positions. That should be the 19th president of the United States. Okay, so basically, she's going back to the whole national movement um, status, okay, that whole 1871 thing. This is where she's going with it. Now, I'll get to the import of this in just a second. Let me run through this real quick. Um, returning our fine nation to one rightful republic of and by and for the American people. So we can, uh, we can chase that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? Alternative writ of mandamus, West Federal Forums, Court of Appeals, mandamus, section 126. An alternative writ of mandamus is issuable on the petition or application of the relator, okay, or relator, however you want to say it. And that's how you are titled. Doesn't matter whether you're a plaintiff, a defendant, an appellant, an appellee. Uh, it doesn't matter what your title is in the lower court level. When you file the writ of mandamus, you become the rel relator or relator. It is considered the first pleading rather than merely a writ. The petition or application supplies the recitals of fact. As the first pleading in the case, it serves the same purpose as the declaration, complaint, or petition in an ordinary civil action and is governed by nearly the same rules of pleading. It is the relator's statement of the relator's cause of action and should be sufficient to entitle the relator to the mandatory relief sought. OK, so she goes into some more of the case and I'm not going to go into that. However, let's go into the ramifications of what this case may entail in its current state. Before Associate Justice Clarence Thomas of the United States Supreme Court. Clarence Thomas. Right now is the most famous person in the world, should be. Because with the stroke of a pen, he can overturn every election from 2020, 2022. Stroke of a pen by himself. Doesn't need the other eight justices. 
Now, I'm sure it could be appeal, appealed to a panel hearing or even a full court hearing. And that may be well the case. But for the time being, Clarence Thomas has that authority. Or he can defer full responsibility and liability on Clarence Thomas and spread it out over his other associate justices, including, but not limited to, the Chief Justice John Roberts. So that's where this case is at. It's in front of a conservative justice, probably the most conservative justice sitting on the bench. It has, as you see, you know, you're looking at a thousand pages she's filed just in these, th just the, in these three instruments that I have showed you. That's due diligence. That's doing your homework. That's doing your research. That's countless hours sitting in front of a computer putting all this together. Now, a lot of it's cut and paste, but still, to put it together, it's very time consuming, especially you know when you live in a world with all the distractions, social media, you know family, life, work, bills, etc. Uh, so what you've done, Christine, bless your heart, woman. You thank you. That's all I can say, thank you. Uh, I, I want you to succeed like nobody else. <laughs> so you have my full 100% support. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, you, should I go over here and see if y'all have any questions? I doubt it. I'm probably going to get feedback for just a second. Because it's muted. Oh, I didn't have it loaded up, so I can't see if y'all y'all put any questions in there. I, I don't see them. No big deal. All right, I'm going to close out with that. If you like the video, hit that like button. Uh, if you like my content, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to know when I put out new videos, hit that notification bell. I will make you aware I am being shadow banned. I've documented this on my Telegram group. You can see it in real time. The members in there, I've pointed it out to them. They can see it in real time. If you're telling the truth consistently and what you're telling and provide relief to people, more likely than not, you're being shadow banned. And it doesn't matter how big you are or how small you are. The original Mark Z, he's having a very difficult time topping 100,000 subscribers. So please, if you subscribe to my channel, go over to the original Mark Z on YouTube. And man, y'all subscribe to him, okay? Because I want to push him over 100 grand. I want to force the shadow banning <laughs> to go away. We, we need a win. So that's what's happening on in, in my group, my channel. So I already know YouTube's been doing it. You know, when you look at my views for some of these videos and they're like a hundred, believe me, it's way more than that. They're just not, they're suppressing it. They're not putting it out there. It's, it's really sad. Um, but anyway, share this video with, Anybody you know that really wants to know the truth and really wants what's going on and what to get behind and support. Uh, I don't know if she needs donations. Uh, I would think so. Uh, Christine, if you know, if you like, you need help, reach out, please. Fearless Floyd Show at yahoo.com. The Fearless Floyd Show.com is my website. Uh, for those of you asking about trust classes, I discussed this with Ann prior to you guys asking. Uh, we may do some live classes. However, um, I haven't run it by Ann yet, but I'm sure she'll be agreeable with me, but we're going to do some holiday deals. So you'll be able to get the classes, Ann's ebook, as well as her soft cover book, depending on whatever you want to do. Uh, but I'm going to run some smoking deals. I'm going to be doing some uh, flash sales. So I'll just pop up and say, uh, 
12th, 13th, and 14th email that I get, and I'll do a Zoom and show you, you know, that the list, so everything's on the up and up. Of course, you know, I swear, tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but truth, so help me God, as always, is everything I do. Uh, you know, I'll show you guys, and then, you know, those two, three winners or whoever, uh, you know, I'll send you a free ebook, or I'll give you some classes, or whatever it looks like, but look for that. I'll be doing that across all my platforms. I'll be doing it on Facebook. I'll be doing it on X, uh, YouTube, naturally, and definitely on my Telegram. So uh, look for it. I'll be doing it even in my uh, in my own Telegram private classrooms. I'll be throwing them deals too. You know, people who just took the one on one. Hey, you know, maybe you want to take some more classes. So anyway, go do that. Appreciate you being here. Thank you guys. You all have a very safe, happy, blessed weekend. Uh, it's a three day weekend. We got a big better Veterans Day is. Monday. Yeah. So uh, for those of you out there waiting for the great RV, it's supposed to be happening any minute. So, you know, and I've said that a thousand times. I wish I, I wish I had a uh, hundred trillion dollars in Bobway note for every time I said that. All right. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate every, each individual that, watches these videos, subscribes to my channel and supports me. And y'all send me those emails telling me, you know, Hey man, thank you, brother. You helped me out. Or, you know, you prevented me from doing this because you told me about this or that or them. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. I'll see you next time.